Coffee 101, presented by Theodore Erski, author of Salavandra, A Coffee Tale, and A Coffee Crusade. Coffee is a shrub-like plant native to Ethiopia and now grown around the world, always within the tropics. The tropics constitute that belt of the earth south of the Tropic of Cancer and north of the Tropic of Capricorn. Of the hundreds of species of coffee, only one, Arabica, is primarily used in the specialty coffee trade. Coffee grows on trees, usually in clusters of between 10 and 50 beans. As the beans grow and ripen, they transition from a waxy green hue into a deep cherry red. Indeed, ripe coffee beans are often called cherries because of the obvious resemblance. Notice that one cluster may contain both green, unripe coffee cherries, as well as red, ripe ones. The highest quality coffee is always hand-picked. Harvesters select only the red, ripe beans while leaving the green ones to ripen at a later time. Selecting only the red beans to harvest is time and energy intensive. People must return to the same coffee tree time and time again to capture only the ripe beans during any harvest season. This produces the highest quality coffee and is in stark contrast to the large-scale mechanized harvesting practices where all manner of beans are harvested at the same time. Each coffee cherry contains two coffee beans. Notice that when the red outer layer is peeled away, a sticky and translucent inner coating covers each bean. These layers are removed during processing. The technique called wet processing strips the bean's outer layers by various pulping and soaking methods. Beans are then laid out on large concrete patios and frequently raked in order to dry in the sun to about 12% moisture content. Following drying, the coffee's third and final outer layer needs to be milled away. This is a delicate, parchment-like coating that easily peels off the dried coffee bean. Indeed, at this stage, the coffee is often called parchment. You may also hear it referred to as pergamino. Finally, the coffee is ready for polishing and sorting. Polishing improves the appearance, while sorting establishes various grades, as well as removing any broken or ill-formed beans. Notice that the beans are small and green. This is what all coffee looks like before it's roasted. Brazil produces by far the most coffee in the world and has done so since the late 19th century. The city of Sao Paulo, located in Brazil's southeast, where most of the country's coffee is grown, was initially built primarily from coffee profits. Coffee is mostly grown on a large scale in Brazil, where uniform rows of coffee trees stand in the full sun and facilitate mechanized cultivation and harvesting. This type of monoculture maximizes economies of scale, but has environmental and quality challenges yet to be overcome. Vietnam is another major coffee producer, having burst onto the production scene at the beginning of the 21st century. With market reforms and aggressive state-initiated cultivation in the central highland provinces, this country quickly overtook Colombia as the second most productive coffee producer in the world. Challenges facing Vietnam include land use conflicts as well as bean quality improvements. Colombia is best known for its iconic coffee farmer, Juan Valdez, a marketing tool created by the National Coffee Growers Federation in 1959. Colombian coffee is grown in the west and northwest on thousands of small scale, family run farms scattered throughout the mountainous region. Colombian coffee is well known for its reliable consistency because the beans are meticulously sorted and blended before export. The remarkable coffee plant is native to Ethiopia, and the country continues to cultivate and export extremely fine world-class beans. Regions of coffee production are often used to denote coffees, such as Yerga Chefe or Sadamo, two of the country's highest prized coffees. Ethiopian coffees are perhaps the world's most distinctive, with high levels of Cabernet-like acidity and astonishing citrus and floral bouquets and flavors. A well-known and expensive coffee is cultivated in Jamaica, specifically on the slopes of the Blue Mountains. These slopes are situated on the far eastern side of the island, just northeast of Kingston. The mild, well-balanced, and smooth character of Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee, along with its very small supply, is why its price is often higher than that of comparatively close Central American coffees. Hawaii is the only U.S. state situated within the tropics. It's well known for its mild, full-bodied coffee, which is grown on the Big Island's western slopes near the town of Kona. This coffee is relatively expensive compared to other specialty beans because of quality control and certification measures 
initiated by the Kona Coffee Council, as well as the fact that it's cultivated in the United States, which has higher wage and input costs compared to other coffee-producing countries. Wherever coffee comes from, it must be roasted before grinding and brewing. Roasting beans properly requires lots of practice, lots of tasting, and lots of patience. A master roaster will find the ideal roast level for each type of coffee, which can vary greatly. For instance, coffees from East Africa are often ideally suited to lighter roast levels, whereas coffees from Indonesia exhibit the most character with darker roasting. The coffee and roast you prefer is unique to your own palate. There is no such thing as the world's best coffee, regardless of what any particular coffee snob may profess. There are approximately 76 coffee-producing countries throughout the tropics, each having particular farms, estates, or cooperatives producing unique beans for us to experience.